that is the entire ecosystem, particularly around WeChat and the paying for things inside of the Chinese market, which gives us the massive, massive market cap and value of the company based in Shenzhen, just across the border into mainland China from Hong Kong, $450 billion of market mm. cap. That's, That's right about at the top of the pecking order. Price earnings ratio 52.6, dividend yield minuscule at 0.17%. I mean, this company, there's the chart. What a happy uh, outcome that's been for Nasbert. Yes, and therefore a happy outcome for most South African pensioners. So mm. if you're watching this show, you're a South African pensioner, congratulations. This is the one company you've got the most exposure to in your portfolio, even if it is through your pension fund, yep. we don't even know what the individual holdings because are. Because since a couple of companies like SAB Miller came out of our index, the importance of NASPAT has grown and it's grown because of this thing. Okay, but let's leave that aside for the minute. I know that in our client base of customers who have investments with us in New York, quite a few have asked for and bought Tencent in its ADR in the US mm. and that's been a very successful investment for them. What is there not to like about this company? We've talked about it so often. Is there any risk? Do you worry about the Cayman Island control structure? I know, I, I know people have noticed uh, the, the structure and it comes up every now and then, the variable interest entities. Mm. But if you look at Alibaba and a bunch of different Chinese companies, the rules of the country just don't allow, allow foreigners to have ownership in certain key industries and that's why they don't give you real uh, normal shielding in the company but they do give you the economic benefits mm. uh, of that so it's not too dissimilar to some other structures around the world so it's not a problem until it is but i think it's a very very small chance that something could go wrong in these vie entities because the chinese government knows it's not in their interest to really frighten international investors and yeah. um and have just to be clear, the company it. itself, which is listed in Hong Kong with the code 0700, is mm. Tencent, right? Yes. And it has its shareholding, which is the NASPAT holding, then the other directors like Pony Ma and others and a couple of other Chinese institutions and so on. The thing that is listed there, though, has this Cayman Island uh, structure, but really it's just so that the flows of money that come up from the underlying entity are structured in that way. What you are buying is a Chinese company with a Chinese business that's regulated in China. Yes, but once again, I compare it to Alibaba, which has the same structure, but mm. furthermore, Alibaba split its financial interest and financial to the rest of the business. Tencent, uh, we pay is included, so it's still one business, and that means they needed to be clever, but I don't see a problem with that. I think the big risk with Tencent is the price, the valuation, where time and time again, people look at the price, they say, oh my goodness, it's doubled, it's tripled, it's gone up 10 times, it's gone up 100 times, how much further can it go? But it has such a strong position in China and the government actually protects the company and all the IT companies in China to a certain extent by not allowing the yes. likes of Google and Facebook to operate in the country and that creates space for these Chinese champions to really yep. grow and become dominant in the market. And that's markets. going to continue because as we saw in the news this morning, Xi Jinping has been confirmed for another period and he's been elevated to a status equivalent to Chairman Mao and Chairman mm. uh, D Deng Xiaoping. So it's possible that he could actually even stay for 15 years or more. So the kind of mixed model, strong central control, but strong support for private companies, one can expect to continue. Yes, and in Tencent's case, what to me. it does. It seems great. And in Tencent's case, what this protection has allowed them is space to grow. But now, some would say they don't even need the protection. Mm. They are leading a lot of these technologies, whether gaming, AI, cloud yes. services. So and they are starting well. to, to globalize their business. They bought Supercell, which was a very powerful provider of games like Clash of Clans, mm. which was based in Finland. And now that is part of the global group. League of Legends under the right games thing, Epic Games, Robot Entertainment. They've been continuing to do this. But at the core of the business is still the Honor of Kings yes. game. And in China, we were talking about this in the lead-in. The external environment, the air quality is not great. Mm. People don't have extended families no. because of the one-child policy. Also, there's a kind of a thing in China where if you're having a hard time or if you're poor, no one cares. <laughs> it's not like there's the sense of entitlement or anything is gonna likely change. So fantasy games mm. on your cell phone are very, very popular. People basically live inside of these yes, things. Yes, and it used to be the PC where they had these halls where you go and there might be a thousand guys and it's nine out of ten times the guys 
with earphones on sitting in front of the PC. And what Tencent has done is they've taken that whole group of hardcore gamers. Yep. They've moved them to the mobile device. Now the mobile device allows for the graphics and the processing power to have intricate, co more complex, yep. interactive games yep. on that uh, uh, mode, on that console. But they've also added casual gamers. So a lot of South Africans or people across the African continent might know about Candy Crush, yep. which is owned by another company we'll get to. But that's a casual game, but once you start playing it, you get addicted. Now, yeah. Some people you know they needed to go to the doctor because of carpal tunnel syndrome because they played on their cell phone the whole time. Yeah. So whether it's hardcore gaming or casual gaming, Tencent has taken people with and from the PC environment to the mobile yeah. environment. Okay, so you said you're a little worried that this thing continues to do so well, continues to beat and raise expectations, mm. but is expensive as a result. So how are you going to call it? Hot or not? Uh. Ten cent itself directly. <laughs> yes, so the company itself is red hot. If you buy it via Naspas, you get a steep discount. That's also red hot. Yeah. But buying ten cent directly, ah, oh, it looks full to me. And if I said this a year or two or three ago, I would have been wrong. Mm. But this time, I'm still going to stick to my guns and say, for me, the valuation is full. So from an investment perspective, not hot. Okay, I'm going to call it hot anyway, because I reckon that this thing's got further...